Hello there, my Wild West Fantasy steam-powered robot friends. That's right, we're doing a Grenadines list. So, we now have Set 7 came out, Flame of Zolta. I've been doing a bunch of different lists, as you might have noticed. Uh, one of the ones that I've been really excited to do, and I just didn't have the Shift Stone for for a little while, so I spent a bunch of my gold to actually buy enough packs for it, is a deck that I want to call Profanidin. So I'm going to go into practice mode because I am fairly high ranked and I, I haven't fully tested this yet. I've been doing a little bit of gauntlet with it and a little bit of casual and it seems really, really fun. But this used to be one of my all-time favorite decks and that is Stone Scar Grenadine. I always advocated for a list that didn't run Witching Hour and I really like the idea of getting to add a little bit of time to this because it does a bunch of different things for us. There's some very cool cards that we get to add. Most of the core of the deck remains the same. So if you've ever seen a Grenadin Stone Scar sacrifice list, then you'll see a lot of familiar things to this one. Now, if you haven't seen that, the main idea is Gear Cruncher is whack. <laughs> so basically, Gear Cruncher, for every Grenadin that you have in your void, you get to play a 1-1 one -one Grenadin when it comes into play. And generally, the idea is that you pay it for 7, and you fill your entire board. So you get 11 extra Grenadine on top of the Gear Cruncher. Which is actually nuts. Um, it doesn't sound like a lot. You're like, oh, it's just 1-1s. One That's a lot. <laughs> That's, it's really gross. If you've ever played this deck, you'll realize right away that is an incredible amount of value. Especially when you have a bunch of different ways to sacrifice them. So you get the advantage both of early sacrifices to power up the Gear Cruncher. And then once Gear Cruncher has been played you can use other sacrifice engines afterwards to use all of those 1-1 Grenadines to just kind of keep the value engine running. And then, of course, Gear Cruncher itself can just exhaust and nuke things from orbit because that's what Gear Cruncher does. So you want a lot of early Grenadines and then a lot of ways to sacrifice them. So you've got Grenadine Drone, Spark Catcher because when it dies, it gives you another Grenadine. This one because it gives you an extra Grenadine when it comes into play. You have Scrap Tank to give you extra Grenadines when it comes into play as well and also just this kind of like a finisher so some decks won't necessarily have removal or they'll have to use their removal on this and then not be able to deal with your scrapper and gear cruncher and so you just want to have a scrap tank it can be a lot of explosive damage out of nowhere we of course have merchants which i'll get to in a little while so we have our market but scrap tank stone scar scrapper is one of the best cards in this deck uh it's always been fantastic it's unbelievable source of value so the idea is it that whenever one of your grenadine dies you gain a health and then once a turn you can pay one and sacrifice two other units of any kind to draw two cards so we're talking about ways to use all of those grenadines off of gear cruncher there you go it's real good we also have another way for us to kind of power all this out because gear cruncher does cost a lot is combustion cell so another way for us to just sacrifice a bunch of things is once a turn you can sacrifice a unit to get plus one power and if it's granted in you just get plus two so you've got the combustion cells as well to power up the gear crunchers or scrap tanks stuff like that then we have as i said before devour we have madness to go with some of our other sacrifices so like with stone scar scrapper so you can sacrifice them that way we have assembly line as another way to get a bunch of different grenadines and we have quarry to draw a bunch of cards I skipped over two cards, and those are our new additions. So we have Worthy Cause, which is kind of just a strict upgrade on Combust. Combust used to be in the deck. I took it out because we're going to be trying to splash a little bit of time in here, and Worthy Cause is just kind of insane. Um, you can sacrifice a unit to silence an enemy, and give it minus one, minus one for each unit in your void. In this deck, that's often like minus six, minus six, even fairly early in the game, and late it's minus 20, minus 20. No joke. I have very easily given things minus 30. <laughs> it's not that difficult when you've got a few gear crunchers. So you can do things like that. And I mean, the silence is also just huge already. And the decimate can be really, really nice. So you can get into, and the fact that it's a fast spell. So you can get into positions where you attack with a board, your opponent does some blocks, you have like a scrap tank in play, you sacrifice something else, make your scrap tank larger at instant speed so at fast speed and also give it life steal and suddenly like a game that you had as a race where it was kind of close it's just an absolute blowout in your favor from one worthy cause so worthy cause is very cool that way the other one that i really really like is profane nexus 
and I wasn't sure how well this would work. This was the main conceit of me building this deck. Worthy Cause was a really, really nice bonus, and I wanted to try it, but the reason why I actually sat down and wrote this whole list out was this card in particular. Because, man, this has a lot of things going for it if you're trying to do Grenadine. Every single spell that it does is a sacrifice. So, dealing four damage, putting an extra sigil into play, or drawing two extra cards, the Devour. The Last Rites is the worst of them, but Soul's Fury and Devour are both pretty awesome. And then just the passive of it is actually amazing. So whenever you sacrifice a unit, deal one damage to the enemy player, and you gain a life. One of the things that that can have is that it can get like beaten down by flyers, because you don't really have a way to stop a flyer, and if the, you don't have a worthy cause or anything like that, then they are just going to beat you to death. But this gives you a bunch of extra breathing space. You can sacrifice two things a turn with Stone Scar Snapper, Scrapper, and then maybe like Combustion Cell at the same time. Suddenly you've gained three life and they've lost three life. That's a lot of extra time if they're beating you in the air with like a Valkyrie Enforcer or whatever. Like just name something like a Ikaria, right? Like a, the 1-1 one, one Ikaria that starts out early. Suddenly it's not as big of a problem because you can kind of hang around even if it's a 4-3. You can spend a little bit of time building up your board and managing it. And Yeah, they can hit the Profane Nexus, but then you've still gotten some value out of it and you've gained life that way. So Profane Nexus has been really, really cool. And in testing it so far, it seemed really nice. Then we have like a regular power base, a bunch of different crests, a couple of banners here and there. We're mostly worried about the Stone Scar. And then we just got a little bit of time because we're not running a ton of cards, just these seven. And then our market is uh, some of the cards we used to have. So we do have a Combust in the market because I do like having some kind of removal that we can grab right away. If there's a problem unit, like a big flyer, then you have an answer to it in your market. And we want Extend Merchant because we want to give a little bit of extra redundancy to our deck mostly with like Profane Nexus and Combustion Cell, because those cards are very key for a lot of different game plans. And Combust is just a really nice one to have. We can't put a Worthy Cause in there, so it makes sense to have Combust. And a little extra removal can go a long ways. We have the Combustion Cell and the Nexus, like I talked about. We also have Scrap Heap. So if you end up in a position where you just really need to keep on powering out Grenadine, even if they're really expensive so that you can sacrifice them to Devourers or just Stone Scar Scrapper, then you have that. And it has the added bonus of if you top deck a late gear cruncher, you can just suddenly smash them for like 15 damage because you put that much into play. Uh, I guess it's 14, not 15. Still pretty good. So scrap heap giving all your grenades charge can be a thing. And then last but not least, uh, the best finisher in my mind still, I think that it still beats out Witching Hour, even if you're just doing the two color version of this deck. And that's Caleb, Uncrowned Prince. Because Caleb is insane. <laughs> you can have like... Four different 1-1s, one -ones, and then you play a Caleb, and that just tends to be game. It does a lot. It's not always the case, but Caleb is really nasty. It's a good way to just dig yourself out of a lot of real bad problems, and it's a lot of fun to play it too, so a little bit easier to cast than Witching Hour as well. Mostly, like, the influence requirements were always really hard. Caleb is pretty easy to hit influence on for this style of deck anyways. All right, so that is our deck. We're going to be running it through a gauntlet. I'm going to be doing a little bit of, I think, casual or practice play today because, like I said, I don't really want to wreck my whole ranked rating right now. It kind of matters a little bit. But thank you all for stopping by. Big shout out to all of my subs and patrons, the people that go on Patreon and give me a little bit of money here and there so that I can do these videos for you. Uh, it's an incredible amount of support, and I do really appreciate it. I'll be back with the rounds.